JBN to keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi guys. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Man killed during altercation with policeman in Clarendon. A 21-year-old man was shot dead in an alleged confrontation with an off-duty policeman in Savannah Cross, Clarendon, on Saturday. He has been identified as Alex Williams of Savannah Cross. Police reports say both men got into an altercation. Williams attempted to use a machete to chop the policeman and he was shot. The incident was reported to the Inspectorate of Professional Standards Oversight Bureau iProbe under the Independent Commission of Investigations in the calm. Teen boys on the run following fatal stabbing. Two teenage boys are on the run following the fatal stabbing of a man in the community of Bangor Ridge in Buff Bay, Portland on Friday. Police sources say that on Friday afternoon, men were gambling at a location in the community when an argument developed between the now deceased man and the teenagers. The argument turned physical. According to the police, during the physical confrontation, a knife was allegedly used to stab the deceased several times. The man was rushed to the hospital but was pronounced dead upon arrival. The teenagers reportedly fled the scene and are being sought by the police. It is understood that one of the boys is a grade 9 student from a high school in Portland, while the other was only recently expelled from a high school in the neighboring parish of St. Mary. The police are urging the boys to turn themselves in. Police probing man's murder along St. John's Road. Investigators in the St. Catherine North Police Division have launched a murder probe following the fatal shooting of a man along St. John's Road in Spanish Town on Saturday night. He has been identified as Garfin Edwards of Newland District, Portmore, St. Catherine. About 10.50 p.m., loud explosions were reportedly heard along St. John's Road. Upon arrival of the police, Edwards was seen landing a passageway with gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. A motor car believed to have been driven by the deceased was recovered from the scene. No motive have been established for the murder. Sections of Spanish Town are currently under a 24-hour curfew. Mom says son made report to school before deadly attack. Stacy and Dunkley, mother of the deceased Erin High School student Ronil Plummer, says if the school had acted on a complaint made by her son on Thursday, he would be alive. Dunkley was speaking to reporters gathered in the living room of her house in Point, St. James, on Friday morning as she fielded questions about the tragedy that has befallen her family. In the meantime, the police reported Friday afternoon that the 14-year-old boy, accused of the fatal stabbing of Renil, was taken by his parents to the Granville Police Station, where he was questioned by detectives. They said the investigations were going smoothly and promised to give an update as early as possible. On Friday, Dunkley, clad in one of her son's school shirts and on the brink of tears, said information about a report by her son to the school was conveyed to her following the incident. I always tell him, when something happens at school that a kids to find an adult, find a teacher, find a counselor, find somebody. And that is why I went to the lady yesterday and lodged a complaint at lunchtime. That's what I heard. She said, she said the comment was made about the student, which is alleged to have Neil, as he exited the school compound at 3 p.m. at the end of classes. In the lunchtime, I heard that them drape him up. And that's the time I went to the lady and make a report. But the lady didn't do anything about it. And so them lay away him after school by the gate and stab him, she said. The school on Friday hosted counseling sessions for the students and staff with representatives of the Ministry of Education and Youth in attendance. Dunkley said up to Friday morning she had not been contacted by any official from the school. Last night, when we were up by the Mount Salem police station, they didn't have discipline come up there, but I haven't heard anything else. I'm no principal. I don't get a call from the school. No teacher, nobody, she lamented. In fact, the only call she said she got in relation to the incident was from the taxi operator who took her son to the hospital as he bled from the wound to his chest. That was the last thing she expected to hear about her son after they parted in their usual manner on Thursday morning as she left for work and he for school. He came into my room for his lunch money and he said, Mommy, I have a wonderful day at work today. And I said, I have a wonderful day at school. And he left. She said, Words cannot explain how I feel. I feel like I want to die, said Dunkley. I don't know how I'm going to manage out my son in the house. I don't want to live in this house anymore because I can't imagine living without Ranil. It's like my heart. I'm breathing. I'm still alive, but I'm dead. My heart comes out of my body, she lamented. What has left her even more devastated is that her son, she revealed, had indicated prior to the beginning of the school term that he wanted to change schools. 
but she explained that couldn't be accommodated at the time. He said to me earlier this year that he wanted to move from Irwin. And me tell him, so September coming, I'll move him because me already paid the school fee of $10,500. So September, I would move him, she said. Despite her deep sorrow, she said that she knows to focus on her other four children, including a younger child who shares the same father with Renil. She described Renil as a loving son, someone who was very helpful and was always there for her. Renil said, Dunkley, who just come up and rub me head and just come and hug me up and put his head on my shoulder and ask if me are right, she said. Now she's wondering what could have led to the fatal stabbing of her son. I don't know why somebody would want to kill my son. One stab in them heart means they want to kill my son because the only one to stab someone in them heart is when they want to kill him, she said. Renil had her dreams of becoming a footballer and according to Dunkley, it was something she said earned him the nickname Maestro. He loved football. He was on the football team over there. As a matter of fact, I think he was second in command on the football team, she stated. It was a somber fear at Dunkley's home as neighbors visited and offered support to the family. Among those present was a godmother for Renil, Marva Faulkner, who said the news came as a shock. He not talk a lot. He's a quiet child. Whenever in the womb, the only time you see him is when he ride the bicycle to McGate, she said. Pastor Hubert Dixon of Church of God in Jamaica, Summerhill, who prayed for the family, said it must be especially rough on Dunkley, given that she is still mourning the loss of her brother, was not being buried as yet. Lowland's exercise of DP powers of the ruling could be dangerous, warn legal experts. It is dangerous and a great risk of the country's chief prosecutor to continue to exercise the powers of her office following a ruling by the Constitutional Court on Friday. A top legal expert has warned the Jamaican Constitution gives the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions the sole legal authority to commence and to discontinue criminal cases before the courts. The office is also required, in some instances, to deliver a legal opinion commonly referred to as a ruling, authorizing the police to file criminal charges against accused persons. A panel of three judges ruled on Friday that an amendment to the Constitution, led by the Andrew Olness administration last July, that raised the age of retirement for the DPP from 60 to 65 was valid. However, a provision that allowed Lowellyn to choose to continue in the post beyond her 63rd birthday last September was declared unconstitutional, null and void, and of no legal effect. Dr. Light Barnett, a respected constitutional attorney, believes Lowellyn's exercise of her powers to initiate a criminal prosecution via voluntary bill of indictment or discontinue a case by way of a nolly prosecute could create a legal conundrum in light of the judgment. According to him, the ruling by the Constitutional Court means that Llewellyn is not legally in office, which is worse. If you're removed from office, it takes effect from the time of the removal. But if you're not legally in office, it puts into question the validity of anything you did before the order was made, Barnett explained. So, if the person who institutes a criminal proceeding is not holding a valid office, then it brings into question the commencement of those proceedings, meaning that it's too problematic for the country to be subjected to that risk, he said on Saturday. Barnett added, unless there is some order of the court that permits it at this juncture, it's too dangerous and problematic for the director to continue to exercise the powers of the office. Another top attorney, Peter Champagne Casey, agreed that the DPP's exercise of her constitutional powers to commence and end criminal cases would most definitely be affected by the judgment and urge caution. Given what is before us now and given what the government's intention is, I think prudence would dictate that the DPP, which is the subject of this appeal, would not exercise any power that would be dramatic on any matter that is before the court, Champagne said. Until this matter is settled on appeal, great caution should be exercised. However, Justice Minister Delroy Chalk has a different view. An appeal would maintain the status quo until it is heard and determined, he said, referring to the government's publicly stated intention to challenge the ruling before the Court of Appeal. As you will appreciate, an appeal is needed even for clarification, he insisted on Saturday. Llewellyn has not commented publicly on the judgment, which has landed down in a lawsuit filed by the parliamentary opposition. The Attorney General's Chambers, the legal advisor to the government, has publicly disagreed with the suggestion that the ruling ends Llewellyn's tenure, pointing out that no order has been issued to that effect. Champagne also expressed concern that public discussion on the issue is heading in a direction that could cause serious damage to the first class reputation of an outstanding public servant. By any measure, she has been an outstanding DPP, and I make bold to say the best the country has ever seen, he said of Llewellyn, was appointed in 2008 and is the first woman to hold the post. 
Four pedestrians among latest road fatalities says RSU. For a third consecutive week, road fatalities have hit double digits, with 10 people killed up to Friday, April 19. According to the Allen Traffic Authority's Road Safety Unit, RSU, in its latest statistics released on Friday, two females are listed among the latest road deaths. The latest victims are four pedestrians, three motorcyclists, two drivers of private motor cars, and one passenger of a private motor car. The RSU is reporting that overall, 132 people have been killed in 113 fatal crashes as at April 19. A worrying trend has developed, with 17% of fatalities so far this year being pedestrians. Motorcyclists continue to be the most vulnerable group of road users killed, accounting for 35% of the overall total, followed by private motor vehicle drivers at 17% and the private motor vehicle passengers at 11%. Combined, pedestrians, pedal cyclists, motorcyclists and pillion riders account for 61% of the road deaths as of April 19. Meanwhile, males and females account for 84% and 16% respectively of the road fatalities this year. Golden demands resignation of Justice Minister and Attorney General over DPP crisis. Opposition leader Mark Golding says Attorney General Derek McCoy and the Justice Minister Delroy Chalk should resign for saying Paula Llewellyn remains Director of Public Prosecutions despite a ruling of the Constitutional Court on Friday. The Opposition People's National Party is issuing this urgent statement to the nation in light of the government's confused response to last Friday's Constitutional Court ruling, which declared that the legislation to extend the tenure of the former DPP beyond September 23 last year is unconstitutional and void. Our objective is to ensure that the nation avoids the impending constitutional crisis that could arise should there be no acting DPP in place by tomorrow morning. As our eminent legal representatives have pointed out with clarity in their urgent correspondence to the government's legal team yesterday, the continuation of Ms. Llewellyn in her post beyond her lawful term is not only unconstitutional, but is also a grave misstep in governance. A copy of their letter has been published with our release to the media this afternoon to underscore the severe implications of ignoring the court's ruling. If the government adamantly insists on the former DPP continuing to purport to hold that office, her actions would no longer be validated by law and it could plunge the country into an even deeper crisis. Furthermore, the current absence of a public service commission whose term was negligently allowed to expire on the 31st of March this year without a new commission being put in place to ensure seamless public administration is a significant oversight by the government that could hinder ongoing public services, including the critical appointment of an acting DPP. Finally, it is clear that the public statements of the Attorney General, Dr. Derek McCoy, and the Minister of Justice, the Honorable Delroy Chuck, in the wake of the Constitutional Court's decision, represent either a profound misunderstanding or a deliberate obfuscation of the law as expressed in the judgment of the Constitutional Court. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.